2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. They whose eyes are not opened graciously in this world to see their disease and remedy in Christ shall have their eyes opened judicially in the world to come to see their disease without any remedy. If God open them now, it is by way of prevention. If they be not opened until then, it will produce desperation. The horrible nature of this judgment further appears from the exceeding difficulty of curing it, especially in men of excellent natural endowments and accomplishments. It says in John 9, And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore your sin remains. The pride of as if one should say the pride and, and conceitedness of your heart and obstinacy and incurableness to your blindness. These are the blind people that have eyes, Isaiah 43, 8. In seeing, they see not, Matthew thirteen thirteen. The conviction of such men is next to an impossibility. The design and end of this blindness under the gospel is most dreadful. So saith my text, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Let's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Answerable whereunto are those words in Isaiah, make the heart of this people fat, make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart and convert, and be healed. So that it is plain that this blinding is a prelude to damnation, as the covering of Haman's face was to his destruction in Esther 7. When the Lord hath no purpose of grace and mercy to a man's soul, then to bring about the damnation of that man by a righteous permission, many occasions of blindness befall him, which Satan improves effectually unto his eternal ruin. Among those fatal occasions, blind guides and scandalous professors are none of the least. They shall be fitted with ministers suitably to their whims and desires, which shall speak smooth things. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood, that is by a spirit of falsehood, do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of this people, Micah 2.11. And the slips and falls of professors shall do the devil not a little service in this his fatal design. Woe unto the world because of offenses, said Jesus. This shall blind them and harden them to purpose. Thus you see what a dreadful judgment this is, a stroke of God upon the soul that cuts off all the present comforts of Christ and religion from it, takes away the bridle of restraint from sin, and makes way for the final ruin of the soul. A far greater judgment it is than the greatest calamity or affliction that can befall us in this world. If our names suffer by the greatest reproaches, our bodies by the most painful diseases, our estates by the greatest losses. If God strike every comfort we have in this world dead by affliction, all this is nothing compared with this blinding judgment of God upon the soul. For these afflictions may come from the tender love of God to us, but this is the effect of his wrath. They may cleanse sin, but this blindness increases it, they often prove occasions of conversion, as in Job, but this blindness is the great obstruction to it. In a word, they only wound the flesh, and that with a curable wound, but this blindness stabs the soul, and that with a mortal wound. If this is the case of the unbelieving world, to be so blinded by the God of this world, how little should we value the censures and slanders of this 
blind world. Certainly they should move no other affection but pity in our soul. If their eyes were opened, their mouths would be shut. They would never speak evil of religion and the sincere profession of it as they do if Satan had not blinded their minds. They speak evil of the things they know not. Beware, Christians, that you give them no occasion to blaspheme the name of your God. Then never trouble yourselves, however they use your names. If they tread it in the dirt now, God, as one speaks, will take it up, wash off all the dirt, and deliver it to you again clear and shining. Should such men speak well of us, we might justly uh, suspect ourselves of some iniquity that administers to them the occasions of it. How absurd and dangerous must it be for Christians to follow the examples of the blind world. Let the blind follow the blind, but let not those whom God hath enlightened do so. Christians, never let those lead you who are themselves led blindfolded by the devil. The holiness and heavenliness of Christians was wont to set the world a-wandering that they would not run with them into the same excess of riot. Since God hath opened your eyes and showed you the dangerous courses they walk in, it would be the greatest wonder of all that you should be the companions of such men and tread in the steps of their examples. Christian, as as humble and lowly thoughts as thou hast of thyself, yet I would have thee understand thyself to be too good to be the associate of such men. If they will walk with you in the way of duty and holiness, let them come and welcome. Receive them with both arms and be glad of their company. But beware that you walk not in their paths, unless they be a snare to you. If this be so, Let Christians be exact and circumspect, careful, watchful in their walking, lest they lay a stumbling block before the blind. It is a great sin to do so in a proper sense. Leviticus 19.14, Thou shalt not put a stumbling block before the blind. And a far greater sin to do it in a metaphorical sense. It is the express will of God that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Romans fourteen thirteen. It is an argument of little regard to the honor of Christ or the souls of men so to do. O oh, professors, look to your steps. The devil desires to make use of you for such purpose. The sins of thousands of others who make no profession of godliness will never so fit his purpose for the blinding of those men's eyes as the least slip or failing of yours will do. It is the living bird that makes the best stale that is a person or thing acting as a decoy to draw others into the net. The grossest wickedness of profane sinners passes away in silence. But all the neighborhood shall ring with your miscarriages, your ill conduct. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. The scandalous falls of good men are like a bag of poison cast by Satan into the spring from whence the whole town is supplied with water. You little know what mischief you do and how many blind sinners may fall into hell by your occasion.